What's going on guys? We are finally well into fall. I hope you can see the beautiful colors starting to change behind me. Nice cold crisp mornings and we are out here fishing for steelhead. Fall steelhead is one of my favorite things to do, especially float fishing. Get such aggressive bites on these fish. They're only in here to feed. They are hungry for salmon eggs. So I'm gonna be running spawn bags and beads. Uh, bright colors today because I don't know if you can see this. Um, this creek we're fishing was out of its banks yesterday. Uh, we were hoping to fish in bigger rivers this weekend, but we are stuck on some tiny ditches today. It's all we can fish because of the mud, but we're gonna make do with it. We're gonna run some floats and hopefully get some nice bobber downs on video for you guys in some small water. Oh, I might have missed it. Yep. Micro. How's your line management now? We good? Yes, this is a steelhead. Unit. This is a steelhead. This is the size steelhead <laughs> we have of the season. Not the size we're looking for out here, especially after just getting through king season. <laughs> Felt a little different to tug on this little fella, but at least we're seeing some chrome fish now. All right guys, unfortunately that's all the footage I got for you of fishing in today's video. It's not always great success for us. All you guys see is the successful trips, but we have tons of strikeouts. And for me, especially in the fall, you know, sometimes conditions are tough. And this was one of those days we just had a tough set of conditions and made some wrong decisions. and didn't do too well, but I'm going to continue the video by talking about how I rig up for these fish, try to give you guys some tips that might help out with your confidence, if you're new to the game. I was always unconfident in the fall. Um, I always thought that you could only really get into these fish in the spring, but fall is a great time to get them, and pretty much all I do in the fall is float fish, so I'm going to show you guys how to rig up, what kind of beads I use, and talk about beads a little bit, because I think it's a super interesting topic, and jigs as well, but... Uh, mostly in the fall, I am just float fishing with some variation of beads or salmon egg spawn bags on a hook. I do prefer to center pin for these fish. You can use a spinning rod and float fish, but I just love center pinning. And it's so nice to get this reel out. Colville Paragon, I've been keeping this reel stored away for salmon season using my older Colville Trinity. And salmon season is so hard on these reels with the skein juice and the sand and all that. But huge shout out to Danny for making a really high quality, durable reel what's up to that and um, it's nice to get this one out it's got this awesome brown color it goes great with the fall leaves and I pair it with the blood run skein cane uh, this is rated six to ten pounds nice and light um, this is what I use for smaller to medium sized tributaries and I actually have another blood run rod it's called the 12 gauge it's heavier rated that I use for fishing big rivers um, but today we're fishing the small stuff and that's a lot of what I do in the fall uh, and a lot of clear water too in the fall so um, I've got 23 pound main line on here and I'll run blood run fluorocarbon leader uh, all different ranges of sizes depending on water conditions but usually somewhere from 10 to 6 pound test I'll be running usually I use like an 11 gram float you know it just depends where you're fishing and a uh, swivel got some big shot a couple liter shot and then either a bead on the end or I'll just do a plain note kind of spawn bag 
simple as that. You know, this is the same float fishing rig I've always used. But I'll talk about some kind of choices you make with bead fishing and some other stuff about rigging up. I think beads are just such an awesome option to have. You don't need any bait to catch these fish. They will absolutely crush a bead. And I just want to say that people are always asking me what bead company do you use? What's the exact bead you use? I am not loyal to any bead company at all. I've used all sorts of different beads in my videos and I've had tons of different bead companies ask me to use their beads in videos. And personally for me, I think that the whole concept of bead fishing and this kind of bead culture that we have where uh, people get super excited about these certain name brand beads, I think it's pretty hilarious. It's literally just a sphere and the colors are all kind of, you know, same typical colors that people fish, but you get one color that you just get so much confidence in and it becomes almost like a magical thing. So I just want to say no disrespect to the guys who are out there with these bead companies. Honestly, mad props to you for making a business out of this. Um, and it's really cool how excited people get about, you know, the new bead colors and these guys are selling out like crazy. So it's a really cool thing. Um, but I fish all sorts of different colors and um, all sorts of different brands. I actually started out fishing with Mr. Dirk Speeds and shout out to Mr. Dirk's Tackle. He sent me some nice beads when I was just starting off and uh, developed a ton of confidence in his beads and I still use a ton of Mr. Dirk's beads uh, but I used to really use a lot of glass beads. These are glass beads. So if you watch my old videos on how to rig up I'll talk about glass but I do not use glass beads anymore and the reason for that is I don't think they drift as naturally as an acrylic bead which is kind of the other standard option. Uh, they're more neutrally buoyant the acrylics and that's more like an egg actually floating through the water whereas you know an egg should not drop like a stone and you know dangle at the bottom of your leader like like it's weighted that's not natural so that's why I use acrylic beads almost exclusively whereas I used to use a ton of glass beads. I would say 90% of the time I fish with an 8 millimeter bead uh, as opposed to any other sizes because this is the closest to an actual salmon egg so that gives me the most confidence but um, here's a 10 and 12 a little bit bigger and I'll do some close-ups too to help you guys visualize these things but there's applications for 10 and 12 mils too especially with bigger water. I also get asked a lot um, do I use hard beads or soft beads and that's something that I've been experimenting with a little bit but in general I prefer a hard bead because I like the way uh, they rig up and they, they're durable and they stay in place. Uh, soft beads um, they come in usually they come in little strings like that um, Rigging them up is a little more complicated. Some guys use a glass bead sort of as a peg, like a small glass bead that goes inside. I've been experimenting with using these bobber stops and that works okay for the bigger beads. Uh, it's kind of ugly for the smaller beads, but I had um, this guy from Shadow Fly Fishing sent me some soft beads, so that's why I'm experimenting with them a little bit. And uh, his claim is that his beads are a little bit tougher, so you can kind of just slide them on. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is on there with no peg and it's pretty sturdy, Just I just put this right on the hook. So if soft beads were all like that, um, I think I would be more likely to purchase them and use them a little more often if I didn't have to do any complicated pegging. So yeah, this is a Shadow Fly Fishing 12 mil. It's on there pretty good, you know. How long will that last after a few fish hookups? It's hard to say, but if it gets shredded, I can just slide another one on without having to cut my hook off. So that's kind of appealing to me, something I'll be experimenting with. Of course, they also have a more natural feeling to them. You know, they're squishy, they feel like a real egg, so you might get that extra split second of time to get a hook set in. Another big thing to talk about is colors, and there's two factors in deciding your color at the time of the year and uh, the clarity of the water. Um, there's kind of a discussion about how you kind of follow as the salmon season progresses, and when the salmon are still in the river a lot, dropping fresh eggs, you want to do a natural bead. Um, this is like a nice translucent orange which is really similar and this is a bead that my buddy Anthony uh, his company is called Steelhead Nation and he painted these I'm not sure if these are available yet or if he's gonna have beads available but he's a good buddy of mine and he's been painting up some beads so these are ones that were really good for me uh, fishing when there's fresh eggs in the water uh, nice translucent orange and then peach when the eggs start to die if you've ever seen like a uh, salmon egg that's been in the river for a little while they turn a really opaque peach color so something like that uh, nice and visible and that's just becomes the majority of what's in the river so trout can be really keyed in on that. So those are kind of the standard early fall colors. Um, that being said, sometimes you can't go wrong with like an opaque orange or a chartreuse year-round and especially in the winter. Chartreuse is a huge bead color for me. 
Um, it's just something about it that fish love. And uh, it doesn't look like anything natural, but um, yeah, fish love it. And then a sleeper color that I love to talk about, especially for fall, is blue. Uh, and I also brought this out, blue spondex. Um, when I heard this for the first time, it blew my mind. But the reason that people use blue, or the reason it kind of started out um, in the fall season is you have a few weeks in the fall where the leaves coming down the river are absolutely brutal. Everything falls out of the trees and it ends up in the river. And it's just a mess trying to imagine uh, how a steelhead can find your bead in that. And you look at all these you know, standard colors that you fish for steelhead and they all are kind of the same color as fall leaf floating down the river. So that's why blue can be super effective in the fall, uh, late fall when those leaves are dropping. It stands out against the fall leaves, uh, gives the fish a better chance of noticing it. So I've had good luck with blue in the fall. Um, doesn't really make sense, but that's kind of why I say, you know, does the bead color really matter? If you have some, you know, fancy bead color that just dropped and, you know, it's selling out, uh, does it really matter if you have that one or does it matter if, you know, you have a similar color? You know, it's all just a variation of orange or chartreuse, you know, basically, or red. So I think it's pretty funny how worked out people get about it, but at the same time, I get it. You know, you get your confidence color and you have those awesome experiences with it. Totally makes sense. For me, I'm not like that at all. I just, you know, my bead box, I don't even know what most of these are. You know, they're all mixed up. You know, I reach for something that looks right to me and I drift it. Another thing I should mention, the hooks. I use blood run tail out hooks and you gotta match the size to the bead. Uh, for me, for a 12 mil, I'll run a size two. 10 mil, I'll run a size four. And then uh, for an eight mil, I'll run a size six to 10, depending on conditions. I like having a small hook sometimes because when the water's clear, I want it to be a very natural presentation. Don't want them to see that hook, but a lot of guys run bigger hooks than me. That's just my preference. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to it. And then for a spawn bag presentation, I will just use a hook, no bead, and I'll use smaller hooks like eight to 12. Uh, a lot of times is what I use running spawn bags. So um, that's just how I fish for these things. All right guys, I hope this was helpful. Just showing you guys how I fish in the fall. Like I said, I've struggled with confidence in the fall in the past because you think about the spring run, that's when the majority of fish are in, but a lot of steelhead will run in the fall and they are very, very hungry this time of year. So if you can find them, throw them a bead, throw them a spawn bag under a float. Uh, usually you can't go wrong with that. And I uh, hope this was helpful. Just showing you guys how I think about beads and what beads I use and how I rig up. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. See you next time.